What is up, Felix Zer here for Thomas Synthesizers and recently I've finally gotten around to uh, diving into the idea of physical modeling synthesis, uh, which is actually super exciting and I missed out on it for far too long. And these last few days I've been playing around with two solutions. On the one hand, the Anima Phi, which is a monophonic and paraphonic hardware synth um, using a lot of physical modeling techniques. And on the other hand, Steam Pipe, which is actually a free instrument for Native Instruments Reactor. So let's have a little look at this Ableton project and let me show you uh, what I personally like the most about physical modeling synthesis and the uh, various timbres that you can create with it. All right, so here we are. And maybe let's first have a little look at the Anima Phi. As you can see, the layout is fairly intuitive, um, as we know it from a couple of other designs. Um, depending on which column is selected here, these four knobs are going to control whatever are the mapped parameters A, B, C and D, as you can see here. But um, the general layout of the synth is much easier to understand once we open the companion software, um, as you can see here on the screen. This uh, works basically like Overbridge that you might know from some of the Electron machines. So whenever I change something on the synth, it's gonna change here on the screen too. And whenever I change something here on the screen, it's gonna change on the synth too. It's not a VST, but um, it also works completely independently of any door um, and can just run in parallel to make it easier to use the synth. Um, so let's maybe just open an empty preset and now we should hear nothing but a sine wave. Yeah, now we can check out the basic layout. Here on the top, we always see the routing at any given time, um, which is quite useful. And then here on the um, top right, we see a visualization of the velocity that uh, I'm hitting on the keyboard or MIDI or whatever. Um, because this is going to be a very useful expression source that we can map down here in the uh, mapping section where you can map all sorts of modulations and uh, sources uh, to various destinations. Then here we have our oscillator section, here we have an effect section and the Anima Phi, it basically uh, can, if you like, you could also not just do physical modeling, but for example, let's build an analog style synth. Here we have a triangle wave. Or maybe let's take a, a square wave actually. Now here in the effect section we could use a filter, a low pass filter. And then here in the mod section we could create an envelope. And then in the mapping section down below here we could select this envelope and map it to the filter frequency. And now we should have a filter envelope. Yeah, so now we have a super basic subtractive analog style synth. So that's in the realm of possibilities. But now let's um, create a new patch and see what makes physical modeling uh, so pleasing and interesting. So the main idea behind physical modeling is that you use mathematical algorithms to simulate realistic behavior of uh, actual physics in real life, uh, giving you much more complex sounds from the get-go uh, as opposed to like a saw, saw wave or sine wave or whatever. And uh, how it usually works is that you first have an exciter, which I can select here as one of the oscillators ba uh, basically, and um, then I can route it into what's called a resonator. So let's do that here, the modal resonator. But first, Let's only listen to the exciter, which sounds a little bit uninteresting. It's basically just some white noise with a bunch of color control here. And you only really start to get the idea once you hear how this exciter sounds through the resonator. And now, all of a sudden, Once I play it through the resonator, it uh, starts to sound almost like 
physical behavior of, I don't know, it sounds glassy to me, like a wine glass almost. And um, what's the basic idea here now is that um, here are some parameters and this thing is basically like an algorithm that does all sorts of complicated stuff that I don't understand uh, behind the scenes. But obviously here dampening, the lower the amount is, the longer the sound is going to ring out. And the more dampened it is, the shorter it's going to be. Brightness. Self-explanatory. Structure does some more complex stuff. This and this is where some of this realistic, interesting um, complexity comes in. And how we can um, now utilize this expression here is if we go into the mapping section uh, to make this stuff move select expression and velocity as a modulation source basically and then start to modulate these uh, parameters such as harmonic structure and now as you can see depending on the velocity which you can always see up here the structure value is going to be different and here I can select the amount and you can even see it visualized here. And we could now use another expression and map it to position with a different amount. And now I could also see where I can find the expression wheel. Where is it? Odd wheel here. And then also map some of these characteristics. And now I can also use the mod wheel uh, on LFO or whatever. And um, actually I'm gonna get into the steam pipe BST in a bit. Um, where there's like a really masterfully crafted um, preset that uses these principles that sounds super amazing. So um, you actually already heard it in the intro of this video. Uh, but let's uh, now have a little look at um, some sounds that I recorded with the Anima Fi uh, to check out basically what its range is. So I created these two beats. These red stamps here are one beat that's more of like a aggressive techno beat and then uh, this one is more of a uh, trippier IDM kind of beat and actually 100% uh, of these sounds were just created with um, the Anima Fee uh, just so you get a little idea of the range and afterwards we're going to have a look at Steam Pipe which is a free reactor instrument. So as you can hear this is sort of like a uh, Slater type uh, planetary salt systems loop. Fairly aggressive kick drum that I created here with one of the more analog patches basically. And here's some layers with higher impacts for the kick. This little bass perk, which brings a lot of the drive. This higher percussion. This one is also with uh, physical modeling, I think. It sounds very. Uh, I don't know, like a high-pitched, uh, glassy, percussive or wooden sound maybe. And then here this main uh, mallet type sound. Just a higher hit from some white noise and some shakers with white noise as well. And now in its full glory. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of range. And uh, up next, the second beat here goes as follows, also created 100% with the Anima Fee. Yeah, similar kick drum, bit more noise. Then the snare sound. Some shakers, similar to the other track. And 
how I did this sound. Uh, it's actually reminding me of a little feature I have to show you on the Anima Fee. So for example, this preset here, Piezo Pling, as the name already suggests, there's a Piezo microphone inside of the uh, case. I think it's located somewhere around here, if judging by the sound. And uh, it picks up this vibration, even the vibration from the table, which effectively uh, lets me use the anima itself as an exciter. And in this patch you can see that actually there's no oscillator selected because this is now the exciter basically. There's just these modal resonators here as the effect chain. So maybe let's check this one out. And what's really, really lovely about this is uh, that you basically have velocity control that's far beyond the usual 127 digital steps because this is actual physics. We're now using the actual impact with infinite complexity to trigger the model resonator, uh, which is a lovely idea, I think. All right, so up next, let's maybe have a little look at steam pipe. And as I already said, uh, this is a free reactor instrument you can manually download. For some reason, in my case, it was already in a library. Maybe it's such a classic uh, instrument that by now it's included in reactor in the first place. Um, so the player itself obviously uh, costs, I think, still 200 euros, but uh, still cheaper in the end than uh, the Anima Fee. If you uh, already have the reactor player, you are in luck. So let's have a listen at this first preset that was already teasing and playing in the beginning. And I think this is just absolutely lovely. This is physical modeling in all its glory because this preset and a lot of the other presets in this uh, steam pipe instrument are just so masterfully crafted because the way I can interact with the sound through velocity and the modulation wheel just sounds so complex and interesting mm -hmm. and I feel instantly connected with a lot of these sounds here and uh, I think at my current skill level, I wouldn't be able to craft a preset like this. But I'm sure if you uh, get the hang of it, you can also create uh, stuff like this with uh, Anima Fee. Just none of the presets that were included in it uh, sounded as breathtaking to me as uh, these created here so far. Let's also check out the title giving steam pipe preset here. Another flute sound. That's a bit more subtle and it's dynamic. The pipe. Yeah, this one is also very expressive and cinematic. And I think this one is lovely because it, yeah, it doesn't sound like any particular instrument per se, but just super cinematic and deep and complex and realistic. And I think this is really what's super lovely about physical modeling because it's just a breath of fresh air because it sounds so different from uh, FM synthesis and uh, subtractive synthesis and what have you. It sounds interesting maybe give physical modeling a try in whatever way. All right, I guess that's it from my side for today. In case you have any questions, uh, as usual, let me know in the comments and I'll try and get back to you ASAP. Apart from that, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Peace out. Thank you.
Thank you.